Okay. Um, social media. Um, please feel free um, to tweet. Just use the hashtag PBS from, from here. Um, take pictures. Um, post them on fa Facebook. Um, the post them on Twitter. Share as much as you like. Um, the Wi-Fi access code um, is ArcWireless11. So capital A and capital W if anyone wants to, wants to use the internet here. Uh, social media is really where this um, conference started from. Um, some of you will know very well that um, we've got a PBS chat Facebook page and we do PBS chats on Twitter. And about two years ago, um, we had the idea of would, would it be good if we did a conference? Uh, and there was a lot of support for it. So it's really, really grown from there. Um, the, the PBS chat has won a, a, a Build PBS award as well this year, which we're very, very proud of. Uh, very pleased to have, have uh, been, uh, being recognised by Build is an amazing achievement for us. Um, we've now got over 1,300 mem members on, on the page. And it's an affiliated chat, so you know, we, we, we're not um, controlled by anyone in what we say. Um, we'll very much condemn, condemn the bad, but we'll also critique the good um, because there's a lot of good stuff coming out of it, positive behaviour support at the moment, but there's still the issues of does anyone really know what it is? Uh, are they saying it right? Are they giving the right messages across? Um, so we're quite often there shouting, it's good, but it's just not good enough. So we, we will say quite often, yeah, we like what you're doing, but that's not good enough. Um, we're hoping that is um, seen as a critical friend, hopefully, to, to uh, some of the, the um, positive moves that are happening at the moment. Um, I just wanted to show you this quick video. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, make it so, make it so, make it so. Man, it doesn't show signs of stopping. And I brought me some tea, oh, Grey Hot. The lights are turn way down below. Make it so, make it so, make it so. So those of you who like Star Trek will know that uh, Picard was well known for saying, make it so. Um, I'm, I'm just about to run through um, some slides with you, just giving my, my overview of what the challenges are for PBS at the moment. Um, so I'm going to face with what some of the challenges are, and then I'll say what I think the reality are, is. And we're, we're kind of getting a bit bored of all the talking and all the policies coming out. It's, it's, why don't we start seeing these things happen? So um, what I'd like to ask you all to is to join in. And if you agree with what I'm saying at the end, say make it so, and we'll, we'll see if we can make it so. Okay. <laughs> uh, right, so what is PBS? Positive behavioural support. Uh, sometimes it has the L ended at, at the end of it. Um, does that mean that all the other behavioural support is negative behavioural support? It surely isn't, uh, because I don't think anyone does negative behavioural support. Um, is it being no nothing but positive when you're supporting people? Um, that's a very hard thing to ask people to do, um, and I don't think you'll get a lot of action from that. Uh, is it just positively BS? Does it really make a lot of sense? Um, when you hear things like that, that really isn't good enough. Positive behaviour support is about supporting positive behaviours, so it's not about looking at the challenging behaviour, it's about looking at the positive behaviours we want to help people to grow into. It should be functional led. Um, you'll have seen in the Department of Health guidelines around um, pro um, positive and proactive, they recommend uh, primary, secondary, and reactive as, as a way of um, t developing positive behavior support plans. Um, some places will be using that format to develop positive behavior support plans. My take on that is, is if you're looking at it from that angle, then you've got um, primary responses to the challenging behavior, secondary responses to the challenging behavior, reactive responses to the challenging behavior. A positive behavior support plan needs to be functional led, so you need to be thinking about how you're working to the function and not the behavior. Positive behaviour support plans look a lot different when you design them based on the function uh, and not on the behaviour. So we say that's not good enough as well. And it needs, the focus needs to be on skills teaching of uh, functional alternatives. Leads to culturally valued outcomes. Not culturally normal. We're not expecting people to fit in and to be part of society and to be normalised. Um, a lot of positive behavior support plans are only focused on behavior reduction. Uh, and we t as I just mentioned, we need to focus on increasing positive behaviors. Some have a very short term focus is about looking at reducing the, the behaviors here and there, whereas we want to look at what, how are we developing the person over the long term. So that isn't good enough. 
Um, it, needs to be, it needs to lead to culturally valued outcomes, maximising independence, high quality lifestyles and valued roles. It explicitly and unashamedly uses the, the um, practices and principles of ABA. And that was said by the guru that is Gary Lavinia. And I want to go over and kiss him whenever I see his picture. Um, <laughs> I will admit my man love for him. Um, <laughs> um, we, what we get quite often, is, uh, I've seen myself as, as we've worked in services, there are some services that have behaviour therapists and the only training they've had is going to Gary Lavinia's four day training. Um, we've got... Um, Psychology and nurse training has long neglected ABA in its training, um, so we've got a bit of a gap in, in the skills deficits in services at the moment. Um, there's only four BAC accredited providers in the mainland UK. Uh, there's seven in Ireland. There seems to be a lot, it seems to be a lot bro broader over there. Um, the one uh, in Cardiff is no longer providing the training, and they don't always look at the ABA text throughout. Sometimes they leave it till the final year, which is what the BACB needs. It's your final year masters that you need the, the ABA uh, related content in. Um, so again, I don't think that's good enough. PBS needs to be accessible and available um, and provided by everyone, but it needs people somewhere in the system who, um, who know what it's about. Um, Richard Hastings um, does some great blogs on PBS. Uh, if you get the chance, look up his blogs. Uh, and he was talking about IAPBS, looking at IAPT and how do we maybe use what we've learned from IAPT and make, um, make it more accessible for people. Um, and there's, if, you, if you look at that, blog right now. There's, there's a good chat between uh, Professor Hastings and uh, Chris Hatton on there. They're discussing the, the finer points of, of some of the technicalities of that. Um, my wife's a, a cancer nurse and she knows all sorts of different carcinomas and what they're called. And the fact that she knows those doesn't mean that um, it's not accessible. Her cancer treatment isn't accessible. Um, and I'm very grateful that she knows the science behind what she does. Um, and I think people with learning disabilities deserve having people who know the science behind what they do as well. Um, so assessments, um, common, it, it's not uncommon to see a high focus on interviews and less focus on direct observations, limited data collection, and that ends up in um, quite lazy results. I, I think you, you'll get results that say it's all about the environment or it's sensory. Um, sensory is often used uh, in uh, functional assessment to describe when we don't really know what's going on, it's something internal. Um, so, you know, we need high quality assessments um, that have data to evidence your hypotheses. There I talk about punishment. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, it's largely misunderstood. Uh, a, a key component of PBS is that it doesn't include punishment. In a behavioural term, punishment is only the reduction of behaviour. It's not about being cruel to people. It's not about applying nasty things to people. It's about does the behaviour come down in the future. Um, you, it's not... It's not uncommon to see hidden punishments used. Um, differential reinforcement of others' behaviours is a common example of that. You're reinforcing um, anything else that the person is doing. So you're not actually building a constructive behaviour. Um, you're just re reinforcing absolutely anything else that's going on around them. So it's not a constructive approach. It's only based on reducing the behaviour. So it's a, a hidden punishment. And they sometimes get labelled as natural consequences instead of punishments. And punishment is very different to abusive uh, and aversive definitely have to be anti that. Um, so it's not good enough that there isn't a, a good understanding of, of what punishment is. If punishments are used, we do need to be honest about them. Um, sometimes restrictives and punishments are needed, and that's fine, but that would be a different plan. It wouldn't be part of your PBS plan. So the key features of, of PBS, as I see them, are about having enabling environments, enabling the development of skills for independence, uh, ensuring a rich access to positive reinforcement, and if reactive strategies are included, um, they're totally non-aversive. So today, you'll see some excellent presentations. We've got a fantastic lineup today. I'm really pleased. I'm very thankful to all the presenters who've agreed to present today. Uh, and the presentations will ooze positive behavior support. So enjoy, learn, share, change, and challenge what you do.